Hello, it's an everyone. My name is Chris Karas. Today I'll be presenting the paper entitled A Hybrid Assembled Deep Learning Approach for Emotion Classification. This is a joint work of myself, my brother and colleague Aristides Karas, and the professors Dimitris Cholis, Mark Soblenitz, and Spiros Shutas. We are from the Decentralized Systems Computing Group at the Computer Engineering and Informatics Department at the University of Patras in Greece, and uh, Professor Marcos Soblenitz from the Department of Informatics at the Ionian University. Uh, starting off with the introduction and uh, generally uh, speech processing, which is the first part, in this work we develop a two-phase uh, two model uh, containing uh, two parts. First, uh, uh, audio is being inputted uh, to a deep learning scheme and then visual images are uh, inputted to the second phase in order to create that um, motion classification uh, system. So generally, speech processing, which is the first part, and generally the field of analyzing input speech signals and methods of processing those uh, signals, has emerged in the recent days. For many reasons, we can identify emotions and uh, more, more uh, others in the field. Additionally, the development of speech processing systems involves several components in the design phase with probabilistic approximations, in order to have enhanced audio sampling and denoising, because sometimes speech contains uh, noise and other factors that we want to remove from the scheme that we are working on. So in this work, we focus into the Gaussian random variables while modeling and filtering noise uh, that gets added after it's being passed through an additive noise channel in the communication system that we have. And we also focus in the applications of uh, hidden Markov models. Moreover, for the second part, we apply deep learning methods for emotion classification via a robust and accurate ensemble learning scheme, as we said, that's applied to a joint deep uh, neural network, which basically incorporates audiovisual inputs and generates the emotion prediction effectively and reaching uh, satisfactory accuracy. Some um, preliminaries about the random variables and probability density function. Uh, in order to recognize the importance of uh, application of random variables, random processes, we first must um, get familiar with the concepts of random variables, probability density function, Gaussian random variables, central limit theorem, additive noise ch channel, and stochastic processes. These are all included in the paper and they cover um, the preliminary section in order th that um, we basically help readers to follow up with the scheme. So generally, a random variable RV is a variable whose uh, values depends on the outcomes of a random phenomenon. So if X is a random variable, then X um, of S value goes to R. Uh, this equation one holds true, such that we have that X being a, mo a measurable function. So for a random variable x with uh, cum cumulative distribution uh, function, a CDF, which is defined as fx dot, uh, such that f of x, uh, fx of x, uh, we have p of x uh, large being less than x uh, lar uh, smaller value, this holds true. Where if that fx dot is continuous and let's assume that it has a differential, this differential is named as the probability density function, also known as PDF, which is shown uh, here in equation 3. Where here the fx of x is called the probability density function, and generally in probability the PDF of a continuous random variable is a function whose value at every given sample that we take represents the set of potential values taken by the random variable. This value generally may be read as a relative chance that the uh, value of the random variable would match the current sample. Next, we have the likelihood density function, which, where it's used to express the probability that the random variable will fall within a certain range of values that we look on, as opposed to taking on any value, where we basically have this um, equation for where uh, it's uh, the, the part that we previously discussed, and then we... Um, Go to that integral uh, where we have the fx of x. In this uh, we have the, uh, a tiny proof in the paper. Hence, if we change that fx of a of uh, this uh, a value, we can plot the probability density function of Gaussian random variables, as we have done here. So, a Gaussian random variable is the random variable used to describe the Gaussian distribution, as we all know. 
And the general form of the PDF of a Gaussian random variable x is of this form. So by changing m and sigma, we can plot the different uh, Gaussian uh, distribution. Uh, why is that important? It is because we follow this um, step to model noise that is uh, on uh, that happens on random variables. So noise is often modeled as a Gaussian random variable, and this is because noise is a byproduct of a large number of independent uh, small effects, which can be represented as random variables. By applying the central limit theorem, noise can be mathematically calculated to be a Gaussian random variable. Uh, the mean of this uh, Gaussian random variable uh, proves, uh, proves to be zero, and the filtering of noise happens when the noise is modeled as a Gaussian random variable, uh, where it has a mean equal to zero. So assume at this point that our input signal is a sinusoidal wave described as a, uh, in the example of the previous figure, uh, where we saw the probability density function. And as it passes through an additive noise channel, noise gets added to that uh, channel as shown here. So we have with blue color the original speed signal and we have the noise highlighted with orange where, where basically this is what we want to remove. Next, to perform the speech enhancement and to filter the noise and try to remove it, the filter works by calculating the average of all uh, the values of the signal from a to A plus M and mapping it to a state A plus M plus 1 uh, TIF point where we have A uh, which is any point in the signal domain and we have M to be a constant. Therefore, we reach here where N is S plus uh, G where N and G are uh, the noisy output signal and input speed signal and noise are modeled as uh, Gaussian uh, random variables. So the filter takes input n and gives an output signal which is expected to be close to that s. So let this uh, output to be uh, O. From the above analysis we have that O uh, at a plus m plus uh, 1 is that sum uh, here uh, divided by this constant uh, m. So replacing this leads us to uh, that sum divided by that constant, which is basically that sum that we want to uh, calculate. Therefore, by doing uh, this um, approximation, we can model this filter signal and the original signal which is shown here. So we basically uh, want to um, look on the original signal we, where we don't want to have the noise that uh, would affect the uh, Emotion classification, which we do later on the, on this work. A few words about the hidden Markov models, where we utilize them in order to perform speech enhancement and to identify sentences, sequences, and words. So, hidden Markov models are capable to solve such problems as the one that we discussed. Well, we want to model voice signals, and generally, uh, hidden Markov models are characterized by five parameters, as shown here. So we have the set of n states, q, where we have state 1, state 2, state 3, up to state n. Uh, we have the set of t observations, o, from o1, o2, o3, up to ot, as many as the observations that we have. And we have the probabilities of state transition, where is the probability of transition from si to sj, which is denoted by aij, and this is stored in a transition probability matrix A. We have the conditional observation probabilities, the emission probabilities, where we basically uh, have the probability that a model or system will actually emit an observation OT when it is on a state SI, and this uh, uh, conditional probability is POT of SI, and this is denoted by BI, and we take P as the set of all these emission probabilities. And next, we have the probability of state initialization, the probability that the states of a uh, Hirn-Markov model begin from a state SI, and this is, and, and, and as we said, they go to SJ, and this is denoted by PI. So generally, HMMs are used to model some unit of speech, a word, for example, and lastly, uh, concatenate a single unit into larger units, 
phonemes to words, words to sentences, and so on. Uh, Lawrence Rabiner characterized these, uh, these three as the three fundamental problems in HMMs. The problem one is the likelihood, so given an HMM uh, lambda and an observation sequence O, we have to find the uh, likelihood of this probability, of uh, the conditional probability O of lambda. We have the problem two, which is decoding, where given observation uh, sequence O and an HMM, we have to estimate the best hidden state sequence Q, which basically maximizes the probability of observation sequence. And we have the problem three, which is training, where we have to adjust the parameters to maximize the probability of observed sequences. Next, we have the proposed zone architecture and the first model that we implement. So as we already discussed in the proposed scheme, we integrate the audio model previously as a random variable and also deep learning method for image recognition. And we utilize both techniques to, to, to have a, a hybrid assembly learning uh, method. And next, as we said, we utilize both uh, models. We have the audio input on this side, we have the visual input on the other side. We have the lookup operation, the convolution operation, the max pooling, and when um, these are uh, fully connected, we have the loss function, and we, we basically structure the whole network as this. To construct the first model, we uh, use a dense layer of uh, shape uh, 1024, we have another dense layer of uh, parameter of uh, the shape uh, 128. We have the dropout. We have another dense layer, and uh, finally we have uh, one more dense layer of seven uh, of shape seven. Next, we have another model, so we can evaluate both models. We can compare uh, them uh, by themselves. So for the next model, we use the VGG16 model uh, where we implement implement it in Keras. And this time, the model construction is a bit more complex than uh, the previous model, where we basically include more layers and more parameters. The input consists of an array of size uh, 48 by 48. We have two layers followed by a max pooling layer with a filter size 2 uh, times 2. And we have a dropout layer here. Uh, next is four more. Uh, we have also here dropout, dropout, dropout. We have um, uh, four more convolutional uh, layers here. And then we follow the uh, same two layers as the previous step. Then we have flatten output and we pass it to uh, two more layers. And it gives us uh, slightly more than 22 million trainable parameters as shown here. While the previous model had 50 million uh, parameters, where most of them were uh, pre-trained. Here we have the uh, architecture, architecture of the model. So we have a convolution 1, convolution 2, we have pooling. Next we have two layers, we have pooling, three layers from pooling, and so on. And then we have the output here. Uh, a few words as per the data set. The data set for the image recognition part contains almost 36,000 rows and two columns. The data is comprised by 48 by 48 facial photos with grayscale. Faces here have been registered automatically, so they are roughly centered and they occupy the same amount of area in each picture. And the columns in the data set contain a number from 0 to 6 and uh, an emotion. So number 0 is for angry, 1 is for disgust, 2 for fear, 3 for happy and so on. The pictures are one uh, long string and they are a grayscale uh, from 0 to 255. Uh, the pixels are a process depending on the model that we use and the training part has uh, 20,000 uh, images and the testing has uh, 7,000. 7, so we sample and we utilize a portion of the whole uh, data set. Moving on to the experimental results as per the first model, uh, when this model is trained for 300 poaches with a batch size of 50, it showed an accuracy of 55% uh, for the first poach and 78 for the last poach as per the training uh, data set, while the testing set, which is highlighted with orange, showed an accuracy 62% for the first poach and 74.4 for the last epoch which is shown here. Here we have the model loss for the train and the test uh, data set. And uh, we next go through the second model which is more complex.
Uh, now, first we have the uh, confusion matrix, and next we move to second model. So the assessment of, mo of this model is based on the confusion matrix, which is shown here, and by the correctly and wrongly pre predicted images. So as we can see here, the um, we have the images, the original motion, the predicted motion. Uh, while the misclassification happens mostly when fear is thought by the program to be sadness, while the neutral emotion, in most cases, is uh, classified as angry. Additionally, we observe uh, here in the code and all the experiments that we did that model 1 is overfitting, and we therefore proceed with model 2 where this model, when trained for uh, 300 pouches with a batch size of 128, it showed an accuracy of um, 42% for the first pouches and 79% for the last pouch, as per the training set. While for the test set, the first pouches were uh, low at 46%, and the last pouch uh, was 75.3%. Uh, at this point, the test and validation uh, result peaks higher than in the previous model, as we can see from here. It peaks around 79%. Um, uh, I think this number is wrong, it's 79%, but it's the, the performance higher, as we can hear, uh, as we can see from here. And uh, as per the model loss, the model is significantly lower than the first model and this time the model is overfitting again and we optimize it more but it's uh, lower than previously as per the confusion matrix which is shown here the predictions appear more accurate than previously than the first uh, model and although the results uh, are comparable to model 1 uh, overall this time the model is more robust with higher accuracy and lower loss and as for the predictions, this time they are more accurate with just few examples. Here we include 10 images in the original motion and the predicted motion uh, because there was no space to include more. But generally, with Model 2, the predictions were more accurate. We have just a few examples where the program uh, misclassified fear with sadness and fear with angriness. Uh, in, in conclusion, in the context of this work, we had identified in the first part many crucial applications of probability in speech processing and image processing. Initially, we started with speech enhancement, where we include uh, filtering of signal as it comes uh, through an additive um, noise channel. We applied concepts of Gaussian random variables of the central limit theorem and random processes at a constant time. We related the input noise and output of that additive noise channel as a random process and then we view them in constant time uh, considered to be as random variables. We applied knowledge that we already have on Markov chains and stochastic processes to get more complex models like the hidden Markov models where we relate a sequence of states of observation that are seen and aid us to determine the hidden states uh, that the system would have passed through. And this process was distributed into three uh, fundamental problems as we saw in the preliminary section of likelihood decoding and training and we presented briefly how this can be solved and the paper will have more um, proof about how this can be solved. And lastly, we integrated two proposed schemes for remote classification. Uh, due to shortages of time, we couldn't, uh, have, uh, we couldn't include everything about the speech processing and image processing and all the... Um, things that we uh, did, but um, generally those two uh, corporated schemes were uh, uh, performed well on how to uh, predict the emotion and to classify it uh, successfully. Future directions of this work include the integration of the two schemes that we um, created with more sophisticated models than those of the hidden Markov models, and we want to create a Bayesian uh, neural network and the deployment of the proposed scheme in real time. Uh, by doing so, we will be able to classify the emotions effectively and at no time, uh, meaning that in real time, we don't have to process them and to wait to train the model and so on. That was all. Thanks for your uh, attention. If you have any questions, I will be delighted to answer.